Drake recently released his very anticipated album, Certified Lover Boy, on September 3rd, and fans have been going crazy. As expected, the album has been a big success and is said to have the biggest first week sales in hip hop since his own last album. In today's video, we're going to go over everything you need to know. It seems as though Drake is playing in a league of his own when it comes to album sales in hip hop. As many may have predicted, Kanye West had the biggest debut in 2021 after releasing his new album, Donda, which topped Billboard 200. However, as some may have also expected, Drake's recently released album Certified Lover Boy was also a hit, meaning that Kanye won't hold his title for too much longer. As CLB is on its way to having the biggest debut of 2021 by quite a large margin, smashing multiple other streaming records along the way. According to reports, the new album is expected to earn more than 600,000 total album equivalent units in its first week of sale. It's also projected to surpass Drake's sixth number one album, Views, which was released back in 2016. However, not only will Certified Lover Boy be the biggest album debut with the predicted 600,000 first week sales, but will also have the highest first week sales in hip hop since Drake's last album, Scorpion, in 2018, which earned an estimated 732,000 opening week units. Not only this, but the album is also on track to reach about 700 million streams, which in the streaming department is only behind Drake's Scorpion album. Speaking of, his 2018 project obtained a record 746 million streams within its first week. With CLB rising to the top and smashing other streaming records along the way, Drake has had the biggest album debut of 2021. Last year, the record was held by Taylor Swift, whose album Folklore grossed over 846,000 units within its first week in 2020. According to reports, Drake's certified lover boy is headed for a number one debut on the US album chart, with 575 to 625,000 in the first week, over 650 million streams, they tweeted on September 4th. It'll be the biggest debut of the year. As a matter of fact, Drake broke his own Spotify record after the album became the most streamed album in a single day on the streaming platform. The rapper had previously set the bar with his LP Scorpion in 2018, which had over 132 million streams in one day. Certified Lover Boy surpassed that number with a whopping 153 streams. As well as on Spotify, CLB also became the most streamed album in one day on Apple Music. Before Drake's album was released, Kanye West held the record with his new album Donda, which debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 after grossing 309 equivalent album units within its first week. This now means that Yee is tied with fellow rapper Eminem for the most consecutive albums to debut at number one on the Billboard 200. Speaking of Kanye West, with him taking home his 10th number one on the Billboard 200 with about 309,000 total album equivalent units in four and a half days, hip hop fans have been comparing CLB to Donda. However, one of the few who aren't taking sides is American rapper Diddy making the statement, I listened to both these albums and first of all, I just want to say that you guys are true kings of creativity. The bad boy mogul said, both of you guys are special and necessary. Thank y'all for the inspiration. I want to make sure that what hip hop knows is the reach and the power that we have. I really want to take my hat off to both of these brothers for sharing their truth. However, aside from Diddy's kind words, there have been some talk of more drama between West and Drake. Although the tension between the two rappers has seemingly been dying down for a while now, a screenshot which has now been deleted led many fans to believe that the tension has now arisen once again. The screenshot of which Kanye posted to his Instagram was an exchange of text supposedly with Drake, which was a picture of the Joker along with the addition of Drake's nemesis Pusha T to the chat. If what some believe is true about the feud between the two rappers, then the closest thing to a confirmation we'll be getting is from Drake's track titled 7am on Bridal Path. Although there aren't any direct references to Kanye, there are multiple verses that could be seen as shots at Kanye, which one includes an allusion to Justin LeBoy's catchphrase, respectfully, as LeBoy was key in West's album rollout and an indirect reference to the rumor that West may have revealed Drake's address on social media. On the track, Drake raps, you know the fourth level of jealousy is called media. Isn't that an ironic revelation? Give that address to your driver, make it your destination. Instead of just a post out of desperation, this me reach in the deepest state of my meditation. While you were there trying to impress the nation, mine's running wild with the speculation. Though there is no certain way of knowing whether the lyrics are truly about Kanye or not, many fans were quick to believe and give reasons on social media as to how and why 7am on Bridal Path was a disc track directed towards West. In addition to one of Drake's songs creating some controversy, one of Kanye's on his new album also started up some talk which involved Drake. Coming as a surprise, Donda was released with some songs that fans had heard at the listening parties missing. The album was initially supposed to feature Andre 3000 in a song titled 
titled Life of the Party, but a decision was made to cut off the song due to its explicit lyrics. However, recently, Drake released the unreleased snippet of the song. In response to everything happening, Andre expressed that although he understood the omission of his featured song, he also regretted that the song was being used to escalate the hostility between the two men. Releasing the statement, a few weeks ago, Kanye reached about me being a part of the Donda album. I was inspired by his idea to make a musical tribute to his mom. It felt appropriate to me to support the Donda concept by referencing my own mother, who passed away in 2013. He said, adding, we both share that loss. I thought it was a beautiful choice to make a clean album, but unfortunately, I didn't know that that was the plan before I wrote and recorded my verse. It was clear to me that an edited clean format of the verse would not work without having the raw original also available. So sadly, I had to be omitted from the original album release. Along with this, he also addressed the fact that he didn't realize that the song he was in was going to be an attack on Drake, going on to say, the track I received and wrote to didn't have the disc verse on it, and we were hoping to make a more focused offering for the Donda album, but I guess things happen like they're supposed to. It's unfortunate that it was released in this way, and two artists that I love are going back and forth. I want it to be on Certified Lover Boy too. I just want to work with people that inspire me. Hopefully, I can work with Kendrick on his album. I'd love to work with Lil Baby, Tyler, and Jay-Z. I respect them all. Apart from all the drama, with such great success, many of the individual tracks on Certified Lover Boy have also gotten some recognition. One being Girls Want Girls, featuring Lil Baby, which earned the largest global Spotify debut ever with over 12.4 million streams, surpassing BTS's Butter, which was the former record holder by about 1.4 million. Along with his number one debut, Drake also had the second and third biggest global Spotify debuts with his songs Champagne Poetry, which had 11.7 million streams, and Fair Trade, which had 11.6 million. When describing his new album, Certified Lover Boy, Drake described it as a combination of toxic masculinity with acceptance of truth, while also noting that without a bit of irony, this mix is inevitably heartbreaking. Although with that said, the theme of the album has been seen to focus solely on the push and pull of wanting and rejecting the idea of committing to a real and lifelong relationship. As many note, the album opens up with champagne poetry, which seems to display Drake open to the idea of marriage. However, with the album's closing song, The Remorse, there appears to be a big shift in his mental state, which is seen through the line, can't picture being a hubby, finger too stubby to fit a ring on. So as it's been interpreted, CLB is essentially about Drake wanting to commit to being a player, which also seems to be backed up by its memed album cover. Aside from its cover, the album itself had some rather surprising tracks. One example of this being one of the songs in which he airs out some of his own past actions, such as sleeping with fans or getting into quarrels with ex-boyfriends of women he only views as casual relationship material. Leading up to CLB's release, Drake promoted the album by putting billboards up throughout the hometowns of all the artists who were featured, including Lil Wayne, Jay-Z, Travis Scott, Lil Baby, Lil Dirk, 21 Savage, Thug, and Future. In addition to these popular artists Drake worked with, the album also features some lesser-known artists such as Thames and Yeba. With that said, that's going to wrap up this video. Thanks for watching.